humans have been keeping bees for at least 6,500 years. Ancient Egyptians thought bees and their honey were so important that they carved pictures of bees on one of their sun temples. Let's meet a modern-day beekeeper and find out more about her job. Hi, and welcome to Tubbs Berry Farm. We're here with Heidi. She's one of the beekeepers here. Tell us what you're wearing I'm and what I'm wearing. <laughs> I'm actually wearing a bee jacket, which has a veil, and you're wearing a veil. Um, and the reason we wear a veil is because bees are stinging insects that have evolved um, and as part of their protective mechanism, they focus on animals' faces to sting them there, the eyes. Um, and so if we wear a veil, that helps protect our faces from, from being stung. Well, let's talk about honey. How do you make, how do you get the honey out of the hive? What's the process? Well, the bees bring in nectar and um, store it um, once they mix it with the enzymes and the probiotics and store it in their cells, they evaporate the moisture off of it until it's the perfect moisture content where it will never go bad. So honey actually never goes bad. And once it hits that point, they cap the cell or seal it over with wax. And when it comes harvest time, we pull the frames of honey out, uh, take a knife or a, a scratcher and, and break that coating of, of wax and then we can either spin it or turn it upside down and the honey will just run right out of those cells. One thing you often see beekeepers do is using smoke. What's mm -hmm. the smoke for? Well the smoke does a couple of things. First, bees communicate with each other um, by pheromones or smells and, um, and scents and so they can tell each other that there's an intruder or somebody's in our hive by a smell which actually the alarm smell smells a little like bananas. And so um, the smoke makes it harder for them to pass that smell around because they would smell smoke instead. The other thing is that bees evolved living in hollow trees and cavities um, quite often in forests. And so forest fires are a big, a big problem, I guess, for bees. And so they've evolved that when they smell smoke, they run to the pantry, start eating as fast as they can, um, getting ready to, to leave because um, they know that their tree is going to be burned down so they'll have to leave. So um, when we use just a little bit of smoke, the bees are suddenly busy feeding inside the hive and so then they're not paying as much attention to us and so it's easier to, to work the bees. Beekeeping is very rewarding. It's a lot of fun. You, they're fascinating and so we do spend a lot of time just watching them. If you want to become a beekeeper, first learn a lot if you can. Um, and there's a lot of really good information out there and especially on the internet there's a lot of really bad information out there and there really are as many ways to keep bees as there are beekeepers it seems like every beekeeper has their own opinion about the best way to take care of bees but there are a lot of diseases and problems that are affecting bees that are fairly recent in the last couple of decades and so it's important to know um, about those diseases to keep your bees healthy and also so that you don't spread diseases to other bees that might be around you. Um, so if you have an opportunity to uh, have another beekeeper that can mentor you or get involved in a local beekeeping organization, um, read as much as you can, uh, take a class if you can, and um, just know that when you do get started, your first couple of years will be huge learning experiences. Lots of fun, but you'll learn a lot. Heidi, thank you so much for having us. I appreciate you taking time to show us all this. Thank you for coming. If you want to learn more, head to the Science Trek website or check our related videos. And if you like Science Trek, be sure to click the subscribe button to catch our newest videos.